It's Feedback Gaming. Hello and welcome. 1936. Hard Survivor 4, the German Reich. Historical turned on, on regular difficulty. We are going to form Super Germany. What is Super Germany, you ask? Well, I did a Super Italy and I did a Super China. And what does Super mean? Super just means a way of using the game's mechanics to get an, an advantage early game. And use that advantage to eventually manipulate the world to your means. So it's kind of like making yourself really buff to eventually be in a more advantageous situation early on. Perfect. Guys, if you like these kind of videos, please hit the like button. That tells me you want more hats of mine for and more of these kind of videos. And also, don't forget to comment below with other suggestions of countries that I could turn super that you guys can see. And, uh, well, then I can make more guides on them, right? Right, 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 right. All right. Machine tools, construction, electronic mechanical engineering, and mobile doctrine. No! We're not going to go for that. We're going to go for guns. We're going to go for weapons. Okay, so we're not going to pick a national focus, which I will explain later. We are going to pick some refineries, and we are going to make some civvies. And we are going to be very selective of where I position some of my gear. Uh, we don't need you. We don't need you. You can choose to have a navy if you want. Just for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to have a navy to make life really easy. There we go. Merge those boys up. Merge those boys up. Go here. Go here. <clears throat> okay. Yep, we're in a good state of affairs now. We don't need the tungsten. And let's go five speed. Okay, so how do we do this? So... With the Super Germany, we are going to try and annex as many nations as possible uh, before we enter a world war situation. What is the definition of a world war? Well, the world war is where what more there's about three or four major powers battling it out. In this case, it'd be Germany and Italy versus France and the UK. That would that would consider four major powers of the world all at each other. And that would be classed as a world war. So what we're going to do is annex as much as Europe without France and the UK interfering. Yep. Seems like a good idea, right? How are you going to do it, though? How are we going to do it? So you can, you're all aware that you can justify on a nation at the start of the game. And if you do it when world tension is really low as a fascist nation, you do get the ability to annex a nation pretty easy. In my honest opinion, I believe that fascist nations shouldn't be allowed to annex when world tension is at zero. It should at least be one, maybe, just to prevent those, like, scummy tactics early on. I think it's like that in some other mod. I can't remember what mod it was now. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it actually might be the Old World Blues mod, where even the most fascist authoritarian states can't declare war and fabricate until, like, one world tension, which kind of makes sense to me. Anyway, the reason why I picked a national focus is because you gain one extra political power per day. And we're going to gain 200 political power before we're going to make our first move. Our first move. Okay, center train some troops. We are going to go for tons of infantry. Early on, we are particularly weak, so we are going to try to make some lots of infantry. To fill out our front lines. We're going to merge up our armies here. We're going to get rid of the naval bombers and the transports. You guys love paratroopers. You love them, don't you? Well, I don't. So, boo-hoo. All right. Almost heading towards 200 political power. We are making our way there. Take you. Two more off. One, two. There we go. As, each, as, as long as each army is 24 divisions or less i'm a happy bunny we are going to renew the mefo bills because you do benefit from them here we go so 200 political power let's do what we need to do we are going to fabricate on poland we are going to fabricate on czechoslovakia and then we're going to cancel the poland one and do it again and you're probably thinking what is he doing so the way the game mechanic works is every time you fabricate on an additional nation it takes 50 percent longer to do it and it costs 50 percent more political power so the first one with Poland, the next one we check is the vacuum, which costs an additional 50% for time and 50% for PP. And if we did another one, that'd be an additional 50% on top of the Czechoslovakia one. So it's like a chain of fabrications. The more you do, the more you chain together, the bigger the penalty for time and political power. But if we fabricate on Czechoslovakia, that would class as the 50% one. And then we disable Poland and go back. That's 50% for each. So what we've done there is we've synced each of the fabrications to happen and, and and trigger exactly the same time. 15th of March, 1937. 15th of March, 1937. Ah, like clockwork. Well, what this does is it allows us to declare war on both these nations immediately. 
and it allows us to annex them. The reason why we wouldn't want to uh, go to war with them each at a time and fabricate them is because it can spike world tension. And if it spikes world tension, that results in the United Kingdom, or sometimes France, to fabricate on these nations, which cause a world war situation, which is what we don't want. Okay, we've gone for radio because we want that reinforce rate, which is always nice. Uh, what do we need? Uh, 18 of those. And we could do another 24, maybe. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Do that. All right, that's good. So we can pick a national focus now. Um, early on, we're probably better off going for a four-year plan. Do not go for Rhineland. It spikes world tension by 5%. You do not want that. You do not want that. I do not want it. We're going to select you. We're going to move you here. Get a bit of shore bombardment is going to be nice. Reduce their defense by a small amount, which will go a long, long, long way. So as you can see here, the balance of military factories here is just perfect. It's producing just enough for each to balance them out evenly. And that way we uh, don't need to micromanage our production, which is always good. I'm gonna make this air wing a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Close air support are so strong. They are so strong. They used to be incredibly strong, like super OP. And then they got nerfed. And I believe they got nerfed again. But still, even still, even after all those nerfs, they're still so good. We are going to go for concentrated. That is completely optional on what you want to do for concentrated. We are going to go for the doctrine. We can probably go for the first two doctrines, which gives organization, which is sweet. Everything else is good as it stands. Right about now. We have a bit of world tension. 20%. So 25% is the sweet spot. You want to stay below 25%. At 25% or above, the UK can guarantee these nations. They will guarantee um, democratic nations first. And then they'll their second preference is non-aligned. But if it's fascist... Or... If it's fascist... Or if it is... Communist, the allies don't care. They don't care. So we focus on the industry early on, as we always do. Uh, we're going to go for our captain of industry. He's our man. Pump out loads of uh, refineries early on so we can keep the production of planes going. Um, can we shift you to the bottom? I always like to have the one that has the most factories assigned to the bottom. Because that way, if we get any damaged factories, or we pick up new factories that are damaged, uh, they'll all be assigned to the bottom. It doesn't mess up our queue and stop producing equipment. See, we're producing equipment now. That's good. Can we make 24? Nope, we can't yet. But we will soon. Trying to pump out as many infantry as we can. We need 16,000 guns right now. The fabrications are going on their way still. Is it, when's it going to be finished? It's going to finish March next year. So we've got loads of time to build up our industry, build our technology up, and do all the odd jobs that we need to do before the actual war. Olympic Games. Huh. Okay, so we need a bit of oil. That's all we need, and we can do without that. Most of the oil is going towards convoys anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We are going to micro the planes individually because the AI just, just doesn't do a very good job of using planes effectively. Uh, they seem to put them on areas for more defensive purposes than offensive purposes. Um, so I just it's my preference is to use them as myself and give them the orders. Actually, I don't want that guy. I want a, an attack guy. He'll do. That's good. We're going to go for the Autobahn. And then we can make extra civvies, which we will do eventually, but not now. Hey, and we have our dudes. How many did we make? I didn't actually check that. Four. We made four, so we need 20. There you go, 20. Done. Um, we can go for mechanical. I don't think we are, though. Let's have a look. That 10% ten, 10 extra soft attack is pretty good for artillery, so we'll go with that. We'll put you guys here, put you guys here. Get a nice attack general. He's a horse specialist. Wow. And we're almost done making our refineries. Yep. Alright, that's it. We're in a really good spot right now. So the only borders we need to defend are the main one of German interior. 
and East Ostprussian. Ostprussian? How's my pronunciation? Yeah, the accent's really good, right? Okay, I'm gonna stop. All right. All right, so guns producing them, weapons producing them. This is a new tactic that I really like to do. I like to make a 24 stack all in one go, assign them to only make one, so when they finish, they'll all just disappear. And then when we've got them ready, we can go. And if we don't have these guys ready, we'll just deploy them early. So then we've got the full army anyway, so it's all good. All right, so what can we go for now? Uh, more than likely, we want to make our infantry stronger. Usually, I don't go for military staff early on, because these are kind of for, for war, where these are for production and research. Yeah, production, research, and then actually fighting those wars. But we are going to be going to war soon, so that is going to be required. And the manpower is doing pretty well, Sue. We've got loads of excess manpower. And we're going to have three 24 stack armies. And we're going to go for... Why not? Let's go for the civvies. It's about looks of things. I actually think I've got the balance of this a little bit off. So I think I could do that and that. And that's fine now. Yeah, that's great. So we're producing just enough artillery and just enough support equipment. Well, there you go, guys. Don't make my mistake. One in artillery, four in support equipment, and 15 in infantry equipment. Yeah, I think that is the perfect balance. And then if you want to, you can add some more into close air support as well. Which I think is going to go on the bottom, actually. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's good. Hitler's questions. Polish sovereignty. Huh. All right. We've done that. And uh, this is going to be useful because we start the game with these all maxed out. So we get an extra 10%. We'll be go a long way. Oh, division, say. So breaking through uh, the Sudeten is going to be borderline impossible. But smashing through Jerp through Poland, on the other hand, is definitely doable. We don't have. There we go. Perfect. Oh, and actually, can I assign you? Oh no, he's a fighter ace, isn't he? Go on, guys. Someone tell me in the chat. Tell me the history behind this guy. Enric. Bubby Hartman. Come on, guys. We've got some history buffs in the comments, haven't we? You guys tell me what he's all about, all right? All right, I think what we'll do is we'll sign these here. <clears throat> ah, denouncing Czech ideals. Oh, I'm not going to do the checkmate joke again. I've done that joke way too many times, guys. You've heard it too many times. You've had enough of it. So, you can go for Gorilla. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, the reinforce rate probably could be good. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. You have no traits. And you have no traits too. I don't want to do that. Mifo bills. Um... There we go. We're not going to need military factories because we can do this with what we start off with. Germany starts off with 28 military factories. That is insane. That's probably one of the reasons why Germany snowballs so well and so prepared for war later on. Those extra factories are so good. Did I say that don't go for uh, Rhineland? Guys, don't go for Rhineland. Don't do it. Rhineland, bad. Uh, yeah, you don't want to do Rhineland. Trust me. So I didn't really talk too much about why I fabricate on these two nations. Well, first of all, Poland is a no-brainer. You get all this land... And, quite frankly, it's lots of areas to expand into. Breathing space for the German people. Is that too edgy? Have I gone over the line there? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anyway, um... I guess at this point, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing, does it? And Czechoslovakia is good, because it's got lots of industry. Yeah, it's got lots... It actually... They've almost got identical industry. I never realised that. And they've also got quite a lot of resources, which is good. But... This is something I've not talked about. They are guaranteed by Romania. So, what does that mean? So, what means they declare war on Czechoslovakia? Romania will get sucked into the war too. And Romania has this sweet oil. Which is something we definitely want to invest into. Anyway, can we like put that on? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Bonus army. Hey, look at it. We've just got enough production as well to keep everything flowing. I like it. I like it. 
Alright, that's done. And so yet again, this is more like investing in the future again now because none of this is really worthwhile. I guess you'd be thinking at this point, like, would I invade the Soviet Union? Where would I, what direction would I go, you know? Oh, actually, am I working on my doctrine? Yeah, I am. Uh, so attack guy is going to be really useful. So Rommel's not going to attack, but everyone else is. Yeah, it's important that everyone else is, and then we'll be able to uh, connect the troops around about here. There's no point participating in the Spanish Civil War, because you're going to have lots of combat experience from fighting all these Balkan enemies, so... You're going to be a good way anyway, so there's no need for that. It's kind of a good thing that this is fired quite late, this Civil War, because it can spike world tension by a wee bit. Japan looks like they're expanding to maybe have a tough stance against China, maybe. Historical is turned on, so more than likely it'll be another, um, another month or so before they declare war on China. And there you go, our justifications are complete. We are going to spam you guys out. We are going to go for the next doctrine. Oh man, that conveniently just finishes just at the right point. Delay. After 15% extra... Extra organization, which is pretty good. You guys get in position. When you're in position, 3, 2, 1. Declare war. Make sure you declare war all at the same time. So right now, we are over our 25% for guarantees, but look now, we're at war, so they'd not be able to guarantee whilst they're currently at war. Guarantees are only for peacetime before the war happens. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to declare war and do our thing. Let's see the checks. It looks like they're uh, probing our borders a little bit to see if they can uh, get through our lines, which more than likely they can because the Czech army is actually quite strong. And I'm going to make sure we fill out all our front lines there. Ooh, they've got a lot of troops here. Oh, the bombing us. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alright, we can go for the research slot. Yeah, sure. And think about the future, guys. Invest in the future. Think of the kids. Alright, so you can say the push into uh, Poland is going swimmingly. Go here. And let's go here. I'm going to separate Danzig from the rest of Poland. We push here, it's going to be an easy win because we've got shore bombardment as well. And they're dead. That's one of the major cities in Poland down. Looks like they're pushing into our borders. Yet again, not, and, uh, not really that bad, but it doesn't matter really because at the end of the day, if they push into us, they're actually losing fortification on their own Sudeten line. So I don't know, it's up to them. Oh, we have another encirclement possibility. Nice. Alright, there you go. So, uh, all we need to do is grab Krakow now, and I think that is a win. I think at this point, when they've lost Danzig and Warsaw, they're almost beaten. Is Warsaw? Oh, it hasn't actually fallen. Okay. And go here, here, and here. Oh my god, a perfect surround on war, so... Combat width of a 280. Wow! Oh, and they seem to be pushing further southwards as well. Yet again, I'm not overly too worried about this. They're holding relatively well, I guess. I'm not too overly fussed about that. We are going to focus on reinforcements and also focus... Ooh, we're losing quite a lot of guns. Oh, it's okay. No, it's all right. No, it's all right. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Um, has Krakow fallen? And Warsaw? That surely... Oh, there we go. 97%. All right. Right-click for victory, boys. And the D. As you can see, that's a separate peace deal, so we get to occupy this land. And that means we don't have to suppress it and hold anything back. We get all of it, and it's all ours. It's all ours. So, all right, you guys can stop now. So what we are going to do... Let me get rid of you. So these guys are holding this. They're not doing too well. Oh, actually, no, we are doing quite well. Look at how damaged their equipment is. Okay, well, this is a straight win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, boys. Here we go. I'm going to put you here. 
and then here. I'm gonna go for a staff office plan for you. You guys are slowly walking over. Not the end of the world. Go here. I'm gonna focus on guns mainly. And then we're gonna launch an attack here. Oh, look at the Romanians! So ballsy! And three, two, one, and boom. So this counter attack is gonna go incredibly well for two reasons. One, they've kind of exhausted themselves by attacking so hard. And two, most of them have moved off the Sudeten line, so we can push them back and do lots of damage. And they won't be entrenched when we push into them, which will put us in a good spot. Um, I like to go for this one for the land doctrines. The boosts are pretty good. Can we extend that combat width, maybe? The Romanians will probably do the same thing. They'll be very aggressive. They'll have lots of divisions. They'll put up a really big fight. And then all of a sudden, they'll just collapse on themselves. Oh, look at this. Straight away, Slovakia is eaten. Gone. Uh, what would I usually do at this point of Germany? I don't even know anymore. How many times have I played Germany, guys? How many? Not, not, not many enough. Um, I guess... Excavations. Um, I guess we can grab that town here. Most of the time, if you can grab Prague, the, the whole thing comes down. We'll do that. I'm gonna go here. You guys are gonna go here. You are not attacking. Oh, what? I think I attacked. Oh, no. Did I mean to do that? I'm not even sure. I'm gonna go for staff office spine because you guys have been idle for a little while. These guys have almost been deorbed. Supply issues? Oh, we've got encircled. Oh, and it was worth it. The cheeky grab, the base race on Czechoslovakia. And we have one left. One left. One ring to rule them all. And it is Romania. Go, go, go. Everyone get into position. Max speed. Look at all these factories, boys. So many factories. Uh, I guess we could go for, like, infantry-based divisions, I guess. So I'll go here, sure. Yeah, there you go. Oh, one division. One division deployed, but not on either of the others? Why? Okay, we'll put you here. And here. These are our reservists. Japan has declared war. We have 45% world tension. The United Front has formed. Okay, you guys... Alright, are we in position? We can't do a staff office plan because it costs 93. I realize we don't have any planes in position either. Can we move them here, maybe? If we make a strong enough push here, we can, like, push them all back. We got enough... Oh, that's too many planes. Uh, the bombers. Move the bombers back. That's good. We got any extra planes? Oh my god, we got loads of planes. Can we... We can do that. Split it. Do it again. Split it. And then, what have we got excess of? Close air support and fighters. Perfect. All right, we're in a position now. We can do a fabulous attack. And I think what we'll probably do is just go straight through the center here and just attempt to uh, encircle. Not exactly a very clean approach, but it'll do the, get the job done. There you go, beautiful. And an attack. Is that the full front line? Yeah, it is. I'm gonna go for a treat with the USSR. I mean, the USSR is probably sweating a little bit right now. Like, how is Germany doing so well? And it hasn't caused a world war situation. Madness. Madness. I guess right now we could sneak around the back of them. Going through the lowlands here, therefore it's uh, going to be easy to, to make pushes. 
At this point, you can do a big push here. This looks like most of their stacks position here. Die bombing, nice. Oh wow, what a what an encirclement, beautiful. Could it even retreat fast enough? And look at that, all of their front line demolished. Actually, you guys can just go forward. Oh my god, they've actually 100% got stuck in this one big pocket here. I never even noticed that. They're all wedged in here. Wow, I wasn't wrong about... Man, this is incredibly lucky. Okay. The Romanian blunder. Oh my damn, that's probably giving me so much XP. How many divisions have we got left? Five to six. Got him. Oh, last ones are in Bucharest. And he did. And there we go, guys. That is Super Germany. It's a super easy way of gobbling up tons of land before creating a World War II situation. And, uh, well, you've got lots of places to expand and in what directions you want to go around. You've got 173 factories, 55 mills, 105 civvies, which makes you civilian production bigger than the Soviet Union. And not so much on military, though. Close, though. Not too far away. Oh, my God. Look at this infrastructure. Almost like we've got, like, these massive heavy weights on our tanks, like, tearing up all the roads as we plow into Romania and Poland. At this point, what you could do is wait for Hungary, 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 to go fascist, which they will do historically. And what focus are they going for? They're going for this one. They have to go for... I'm not sure which one to go for. Um, yeah, actually, now I think about it. I'm not sure. But regardless, when they go for fascist, uh, you can fabricate on them and declare war on them as well. Uh, at this point, you can also do oh, Rhineland and then Auschwitz. And you could take out Poland. And then you could declare war on Italy. So at this point, what you could do is annex Hungary, take out Austria, and then also you can annex Italy as well. And at that point, you've created Germany, that that's almost most of Europe. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, now I don't think about it. This is actually really insanely strong. Because you think about it, uh, the Allies won't guarantee Italy or Hungary. And the only way that you're going to get declared war on now is if the Soviets change their mind and be like, oh, I'll declare war on you. Or if the United States declares war just based on that's what's down their focus tree. But anyway, that's it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit a like, drop a comment below. I could make a series like this if you want. I mean, I could continue from this point and go down my plans if you want me to. It's up to you, boys. Apart from that, I hope you have all an epic day. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.